Well, hi everyone. Today I want to talk about the massive amount of damage, the really utter devastation that occurred throughout eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina relative to infrastructure, highway infrastructure, due to the passage of Hurricane Helene this past Friday. I'm recording this video on Monday, September 30th. As it stands right now, hundreds of roadways and bridges are closed throughout eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina. Here's an image of a road section on I-40 that was undermined. This is a few miles south of the uh, Tennessee line in North Carolina. Another bridge that's been washed out, no doubt uh, due to scour of the pier foundations. You can see another section here that's eroded away, this roadway section. There's video showing traffic passing on the other side uh, by motors who were unaware that the adjacent roadway was completely undermined. So pretty scary situation. So right now, I-40 is closed indefinitely in North Carolina. And this is a result of mudslides, dead trees covering the roadway, just a huge mess. Now let's look at the passage of the hurricane through this area. You can see it's tracking up from Florida and then right over western North Carolina with the heaviest rainfall amounts. So for this area of I-40 that was impacted in western North Carolina, you could see 24-hour rain totals of around 10 to 15 inches. Just a close-up view of that area. I believe this has set new records, although people have better things to do right now than to update meteorological records. A search of uh, the internet indicated that for a 24-hour period, the record rainfall in North Carolina was 22.2 inches that occurred in 1916. This indicates that this record was, at one time, the record for the entire United States. And it was caused by the remnants of two hurricane systems that collided over the Appalachian Mountains. But I did find this information that Helene brought over 29 and a half inches, and this was in Yancey County, North Carolina, uh, just a little bit to the east of the area that we're talking about here with I-40. So again, widespread road closures throughout the area. So we have the I-40 corridor here going from north to south, more or less, and then eastward. Just another view it gives a better delineation between the Tennessee and North Carolina. And this came from the North Carolina DOT website. Just the uh, exclamation points are where the roads are closed. It's just hundreds of road sections that are closed right now. The close-up view of this area. So as I mentioned, there's widespread damage throughout Tennessee and North Carolina. Not only are these roadways impassable, if you have a bridge out or a roadway that's covered with debris, you also need to get bridge inspectors out there to evaluate bridges that are apparently intact but may have significant foundation damage, for example. We have a worker here, it looks like he's trying to gauge the depth of scour at a pier location at the bridge. So as I mentioned, there's a do not travel warning throughout Western North Carolina. All roads in Western North Carolina should be considered closed and non-emergency travel is prohibited. And they mean business. Now, if you bring this area up on Google Maps, curiously, they show this road section is just from a few miles into North Carolina from Tennessee along I-40, a large stretch where they say the road's going to be closed for a year. So I'm not sure where they got that information, but no doubt we're talking months and months and months to try and address this situation and restore traffic to the area. You can just see how mountainous this, this area is. Just a few more views here. This is a close-up. You can just see just a really rocky terrain very hilly. It's a beautiful area actually and just see what some of the flooding looked like hours after Hurricane Helene passed through. This is along the Pigeon River that parallels I-40 throughout this reach. Just tremendous amount of water. A lot of sediment being carried as well. Now I decided to go th through a series of shots from Google Street View. I actually drove through this area about a year and a half ago, I was taking one of my motorcycles to Taylor, South Carolina to Moore Mafia to get an exhaust and tune and dyno done. And it was uh, raining 
quite intensely when I was going through there. In fact, I think it probably rained two or three inches within an hour. And I was very concerned about the potential for flash flooding such that I pulled over on the shoulder uh, on a hill, which I don't like to do because of the dangers from highway traffic as well as lightning. But uh, there was no way I was going to be at the bottom of one of these hills uh, with the potential for flash flooding to occur. So I waited it out and was able to, to move through. But you can see what a challenge this is going to be to restore traffic to the area. There's a tunnel that's a few miles south of the uh, line with Tennessee. So this area that had the most devastation along I-40 in western North Carolina is in Haywood County. And this is the geologic map for North Carolina. So part of the Appalachian Mountains, a series of, of folds of metamorphic rock. So you have a lot of joints and fractures in this rock. Now, I-40 was constructed in the 1980s. So there were numerous episodes of hurricanes going through this area, but didn't quite cause the same amount of devastation, obviously. But again, those hurricanes predated the construction of I-40 throughout the region. For example, in 1954, Hurricane Hazel passed through uh, to the east of this region that was recently heavily impacted and dropped 11.3 inches of rain. There were numerous deaths, 15,000 homes were destroyed, and another 39,000 were damaged. So this was Hurricane Hazel in 1954's track. So a number of you reached out to me asking me to do this video and mention the geology of the area. This area has been prone to slides from the time of construction onwards uh, for I-40 throughout this region. This is a photo of a 1997 rock slide along I-40 in the Pigeon River Gorge. It says the rock slide closed I-40 for more than 20 days. There's another image of a rock slide in the 1970s showing a wedge type failure, another wedge failure. So this is what we're talking about with the wedge failure and what they do to correct it. It involves drilling and blasting to essentially get rid of the more broken up rock and create a more favorable orientation of the rock relative to the roadway. Now there's a lot to siting a highway throughout an area. You have to look at the, the grades, the uh, change in elevation along the roadway, uh, the type of curvature that you have. But when it comes to geology, you wanna orient the roadway in the most favorable way possible. So you don't wanna have steeply sloping rock layers that face directly into the roadway it's preferable to go perpendicular to those bedding planes if you can. So there's a lot that goes into siting a roadway, but ultimately there's sections that you just can't optimize and you have to deal with ongoing problems with landslides. Just again, going back to this period here in the late eighties, just a lot of work to dress up these slopes, trying to clean up these wedges. If you can make out near the center of the photo, there's people doing what's called hand scaling they basically take pry bars and knock off loose pieces of rock to, to drop them down below so that it doesn't happen in an unexpected fashion. Uh, that Google Street View showed us going through that tunnel here, and this tunnel was, entrance was covered up due to a rock slide back again in the 1980s. Sometimes there's fences that are constructed to catch these large pieces of rock that move down slope. And ideally, you want to catch these rocks higher up the slope before they get much momentum going downhill. This is a platform that's suspended by a crane. It's used to drill rock anchors or soil nails into the side slope. I've done work from suspended platforms from cranes, and I don't like it. Something about the single point of attachment makes me really nervous. I'd much rather be in a man lift. But when you have large equipment, sometimes you need a platform like this. It's too big to be used out of a man lift. Just another view of that platform. So I would say that North Carolina and Tennessee DOTs have a tremendous amount of work ahead of them. I will say in, in my indirect experience with, the, well, I've had direct experience with Tennessee DOT and indirect experience with North Carolina DOT. And these are both excellent organizations in terms of how they administer their, their roads and bridges. So I think that is somewhat of a silver lining here. If anybody can get these roadways and bridges restored quickly and safely and using well-founded engineering methodology, 
uh, frankly, unlike I've mentioned in, in recent stories, uh, there's not going to be some slapdash measure to get this, these roads reopened. It, it's going to have a huge economic impact as it is. But again, they got to do this right. They got to do it uh, in a sound engineering fashion and they have to do it safely. So it's just going to take a lot of time. I mean, I'm, uh, I feel for the, the people that impacted here. We, we still don't know how many people are affected right now. There's widespread power outages. Uh, lack of cell phone coverage right now. It's a major disaster. But I did want to touch that on the infrastructure aspects of this. There's going to be a lot of work done here. I don't think any new sections are going to be constructed, any new alignments to avoid some of these areas. It's, it's pretty well set right now. But uh, they will be doing extensive reconstruction of these slopes to make them safer and less prone to failure in the future. I suspect they'll retrofit a number of bridges to make them more scour resistant. That can involve installing drilled shaft foundations in lieu of say driven pile foundations so you can have a drilled shaft foundation go well into the bedrock and provide a lot of resistance or adequate resistance even if the upper soil layers were, were scoured away during a major flood event. So I'll continue to follow this story. There's gonna be a lot of developments that are gonna come out of this. It's gonna be uh, extremely challenging, yet I think interesting from an engineering and geology standpoint. So I'd like to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support as well as the support from those of you who've provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. I'm gonna roll credits here in a bit. I've got a lot of new updates coming up involving some technology that I recently covered in, a, in one of my videos that I'm bringing to bear in some of these ongoing stories that I've been covering uh, relative to NSAR data and I've got some additional drone flights that I've commissioned so a lot of interesting things to check out on the channel here coming up in the next several weeks so thank you for watching everyone and stay tuned for future videos